I've done a lot of retro arc tutorials in the past, and I want to actually share with you guys today how I come across a lot of the information that I share with you. And the reason why this is very important is because maybe you have already watched the video a couple of times, but there's just something specific that you're not getting. Or maybe you want to try and use a core that I haven't covered, but for some reason you're, you're missing something and it's not working. And you want to try and make sure that you have every bit of information available to you that you can have. Well, today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll show you how to read and parse the RetroArch info files to your benefit. So navigate into your RetroArch folder, like I have mine here, the RetroArch build from 9616, so a couple of days ago. And this will work whether you have RetroArch for Vita or, or Wii. Uh, a lot of the information is still actually the same. So file extensions and, and BIOS information actually doesn't necessarily change for something like a Vita or a Wii, except for its location. The locations are going to be slightly different, but for the most part, the information is actually the same. So if you are working with one of those versions, uh, you should be actually be able to apply most of the information to that as well. So into your info folder, in your RetroArch folder, uh, you'll see a bunch of files with no icon. Uh, these have icons because I've already associated them with Notepad++. For this, I am using Notepad++. You can use the regular Notepad uh, that comes installed with Windows 7, 8, and 10, but I greatly prefer Notepad++ for its vast amounts of features that it has over the regular Notepad. So it's just a free and quick install and download from their website. It's a free piece of software. It's very small and I use it for everything. By everything, I mean like config files, bat files, info files, anything that's actually a text file, XML files, anything that's actually just text on the inside, Notepad++ will open. So once you have it downloaded and installed, right click one of your info files, go down to open with, click open with, in this uh, window here for Windows 8 and 10, I believe it's a little similar on Windows 7, but obviously it won't have the uh, modern UI. Click the More Apps drop-down, scroll down this list and either find and see if Notepad++ is on the list. And if it is, go ahead and click it. Make sure that the box that always use this app to open .info files is checked and then click OK. Otherwise, scroll down to the bottom, look for another app on this PC, and navigate to where you have your programs installed. So for me, it's in C program files x86 for Notepad++. Open the Notepad++ folder and then select the notepad++.exe. If your icon didn't change, make sure you right click open with and now that you've selected the EXE, click the more apps, scroll for Notepad++, make sure to check the always use this app to open info files, make sure that this is selected and click OK. It'll open up the file that you just tried opening, but as long as the all the info files change their icon, you're good to go. Now you just need to double click them and they'll open right on up to this screen here. Now there is lots of information here and if you need to make it bigger, hit control on your keyboard and use your scroll wheel on your mouse like you're on a, a website. Websites will do this, uh, Notepad++ will do this for your, your info files and your text files and all that good stuff. Part of the reason why I love using it. So you'll notice I have a couple of uh, tabs open here for different info files. And what you'll notice is that it looks a little similar to their config files, except that it's just mostly holding information uh, for you. And this is where you can find a lot of the information that you might actually need. So a lot of this information is parsed into two. RetroArch. RetroArch reads these files. So here it says display name, Game Boy Advanced MGBA. That's what it's displaying this core as in RetroArch. And if you look into the core info inside of RetroArch, you'll actually find some of this information. There is a core info, once you have a core loaded uh, menu option, that will tell you some of this information. Authors and sometimes supported extensions, core name, and bios and what it will require. Sometimes I've had it happen to where it doesn't actually tell you all the information, which is why I'm showing you how to utilize the .info files directly. So for the most part, we don't care for a lot of the information 
these several lines and then well we care about the author's name because you know thank you jeffrey for creating this core but for our purposes you know these two lines also don't really do us much good in terms of figuring out how the core is going to operate the supported extensions line here tells us a great deal about what kind of files that we can run. So this core supports .gba and .bin files. So if you have GBA games for whatever reason in different file extensions, you'll know that these won't work, including games in a zip. If it supported zip or 7-zip or RAR files or whatever, it would actually be here under the supported extensions. So if you are a user who does like to zip their files, which I personally don't recommend, but uh, we know that you know a lot of users like to do that and it will be here if you can use it. Uh, so this core doesn't support uh, natively loading zip files. Now you can still have your games zipped. LaunchBox will unzip them for you if you select that option. But uh, if you don't want to wait for them to be unzipped, then you would have to use uh, a .gba or .bin file file extension. Down here, where it starts to list firmware. So these lines here. Firmware count one generally means that there's just one BIOS file for this core. And firmware description here specifies what BIOS we need. The firmware path and, uh, you know, this description here, at least this first part, denotes the name of the BIOS file that we need to use. So the BIOS file for GBA needs to be named GBA underscore BIOS dot bin. I believe the opt here means optional. So firmware optional is true because the GBA doesn't actually require the, G, uh, the BIOS. It is it is an optional requirement. And then right here under notes, it says uh, it actually suggests a BIOS file for you. Now, if you use uh, MD5 sum checksums, uh, you can use that string to input into your program to double check against the BIOS file you have. And if it comes back with the same checksum, you know you have the proper BIOS file. If it comes back with a different checksum, chances are the BIOS file still might actually work but it could mean a number of things. It could be that it was patched to do different uh, functions, uh, it's corrupted, or it's the just the plain up, the straight up wrong BIOS file. So test it and see if the BIOS file will still work. But if you got the wrong checksum, chances are it still might not work. So keep that in mind. For BeastNest accuracy and BeastNest balance, for the most part, it's actually the same info file, except for some information like the accuracy tag here. So I'm just going to take a look at the accuracy info file here. Same bit of deal for a lot of the information, except for when we start getting down into the firmware count. The firmware count, 18. There are a lot of BIOS files for, uh, for the SNES. And that's actually not all that surprising. The SNES had a lot of chips on their games. Uh, so in order to properly emulate a lot of those special chips, you actually need a lot of BIOS files for all those chips. So the system itself, the just the plain SNES, actually doesn't require a BIOS file. But a lot of certain games will. So I know that they're uh, to properly do some a special audio you need the, the right bios file i do know that there are some versions of Star Fox. Uh, in order to do some special things to emulate it properly uh, it would require a bios file and then of course i did an, uh, a, a tutorial on this a couple of uh, weeks ago about the super game boy and right here you need the super game boy bios uh, in the system folder for super game boy to uh, function so all of it's listed here you can search up the specific bios name uh, to find the bios or a pack of bios online and then down here it actually specifies core uses split roms for special chip games so some of these bios are not required for most games some of these bios require are required for maybe just one or two games um so dsp dsp1b super mario kart and pilot wings notable dsp2 games dungeon master noticeable uh notable dsp3 games st gundam gx so on and so forth so it actually tells you a little bit of information if it's applicable some core info files don't actually have this but you know uh, this also may not be an exhaustive list of games like it says here it's just a notable 
list of games. So do keep that in mind. Another important one that you can look at is the MAME underscore libretro.info file. Now this one's important because MAME is actually fairly tricky for a lot of people. So the supported extensions is of course zip, chd, and 7-zip. So it does specify that it supports a 7-zip. So if you have all of your MAME games in a 7-zip archive instead of just a regular .zip, the core will load it like normal. Uh, some people prefer 7-zip because it can get superior compression, so you may actually save some space uh, when you have all of your games in a .7z uh, file instead of a .zip file, but for the most part, uh, it's not going to make too much of a difference. The reason why this one's a bit different is because the notes actually hold a fairly important bit of info. Core supports extracted meme cheats, core supports meme save states, and BIOS files go into the ROM directory. So this is a, a common thing with MAME. And if you have run MAME before, you already know that these uh, specifications already exist. But a lot of people don't realize, especially because RetroArch already puts, or because RetroArch already has you put your BIOS file in the system folder, that the BIOS files actually go in the ROM directory for main. So like usual, the BIOS still go into the ROM directory and CHD files go into the ROM directory in a directory with the same file name. Uh, these info files actually hold a lot of pertinent information. Genesis Plus GX has a lot of BIOS requirements, so it's and a lot of supported extensions because it supports four different systems. So looking through these is actually a fairly good idea, um, and most people don't realize that these actually exist in your infos folder always. It's always been here that, that I can remember. But they do need updating every once in a while. So let's open up RetroArch and let's go down to the online updater. Let's go down to the core in the update core info files section and press X on our keyboard. It's going to download and extract the information. And it's going to update those info files if uh, if need be. Now, if you've recently just downloaded a new package of RetroArch, then chances are you already have the most updated info files. But if you are on a slightly older build, say you're on a build from two or three weeks ago, you may want to pop in here every so often and update a lot of the information like databases and auto config profiles and assets and core info files and all that good stuff. You still need to update RetroArch from the website every so often. You still need to get the updated executables and the, the updated package as not everything can be updated through this menu here. But this is a good way to keep most of the information that you need updated without needing to have to upgrade RetroArch every two or three weeks like I do. So that's it. That's how you process your RetroArch info files to get the pertinent info for the core that you need. My name is Brad. If this tutorial helped you out at all, please leave us a thumbs up below the video. It helps us out very much. And if you need an extra explanation on anything that I covered in this tutorial, or I didn't go over anything clearly enough, please leave your comment in the comment section below. Jason and I are more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have on anything that you saw in today's video or anything about LaunchBox. The link to my channel is in the description below. I do lots of gaming content. Now that I've got finally a new microphone, I can start working again on streams on my channel and reviews and things of that nature. If that sounds like your cup of tea, please leave me a subscribe over on my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Remember, freaks and geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.